Hey, what's up? Leron here. Today we're going to paint this beautiful boat scene together. And what I want to talk about is how different paintings may seem more or less complete in different stages. So for example, you can have a painting that looks really, really bad or really, really bland or really, really boring up till the really last point. And this, I think, is a good example of that. So this is another, yet another reason why you don't want to give up on a process until you took it all the way to the end. So let's get to it. Okay, so I'm starting with the drawing process as always. Now I will show you the process in its entirety this time. I didn't cut out anything aside from some uh, not so important mixing action. Uh, so I'm first setting the horizon line. It's been a while since I did just one of these straightforward kind of processes. So I, I want to do a bit more of that. Uh, and look at what I'm doing here. I'm not drawing the boats yet. What I'm doing, or the yachts, whatever it is, uh, I'm drawing a line to indicate where they are first. What I want to do is get the overall proportions and composition uh, of the painting and to figure out if I put everything in the right spot. So there are some things that take precedence over other things. And in this example, it was very important for me to make sure everything lines up before I start drawing the actual details. Uh, and sometimes that's what separates uh, success from failure. It's not any skill or talent. It's just following the right process. Uh, and in this example, this is uh, what I consider to be the right process, the correct way of doing it, uh, which is to uh, make sure that you um, get that overarching gesture, if you want to call it. Uh, this just ensures things are in the right place, really. Uh, when you're drawing things that are a little more fluid, such as people, stuff like that, yes, it does become a little more important to get a gesture uh, in a way, but here it's not as important. Now, the masts are going to be a huge part of this scene, actually, a very important part of it. Um, the thing that tells us that this is boats from afar is the masts. Uh, our brains are very... Um, very well wired to recognize the patterns or the th details or the things we're used to seeing in real life. Uh, so if you look at this uh, photo from afar and imagine there were no masts, you might have not been able to even tell exactly what you're looking at. And again, I'm talking from afar. You'd see the sky, obviously, but you'll think to yourself, what is that down below? It looks like water and maybe a dock, but if you squint your eyes, take a few steps back, it'll look a little funny, but the masts, they really tell the story. So what's the byproduct of that? We have to put them in. We have to indicate them clearly. Uh, now, because it's been a while since I did one of these more kind of a landscape e cityscape e scenes, uh, I'm a lot looser. Uh, I'm so used to tackling like more subtle, kind of gentle subjects. Uh, so I'm very happy that I was able to maybe here uh, do something a little more subtle. By the way, the, the bell may ring, <laughs> so sorry about that. While I'm recording, I'll, worst case, I'll stop it and continue. Um, but in any case, yeah, uh, so I'm putting in those masts and then I'm putting in also, very important, the reflections of the masts because if the masts take up an important part of this and we have relatively clear water, it's very important to include their reflections as well. Now, my bad here, I actually forgot to turn on the camera and I got so uh, sad when I saw it and I was like, oh, we missed such a good part of the painting process. So I'm sorry about that. Basically, I started from the top right corner, started putting a bit of that red um, magenta kind of thing uh, and then underneath it I put the yellow and I will write down the colors I'm using uh, but underneath it I put the the yellow and then towards the left I moved in with a bit of blue uh, while everything is still wet and so you get this beautiful underpainting in its essence that's what it is. Uh, what I'm doing now is mixing a bit of paint to put wet in wet because you see the some of the sky is a little darker down below. Also up above, by the way, but that part I didn't want to get in. Uh, I'm just focusing now on bluing it a little bit and then I'll come back and put it wet in wet. Um, this At this stage, I wasn't sure if it's something I'll use for the painting, uh, but I'm putting it there. It won't ruin anything. Uh, because we still have a lot of, like, it's going to dry, dry up much lighter. Uh, but I did want to make sure I put some indication of it in, because I did notice it in the reference photo. And, and to just put another point in there, I noticed it. Okay, so there isn't, very often there isn't one right way of doing things, but rather there is what you notice and what you want to convey. Um, and whenever people ask, how do I paint this scene, or how do I paint an X type of subject, it's not about that, it's more about what you see in it, what made you want to paint it, and then what you want to convey with it. 
Um, so there isn't really a, a right or wrong answer in that regard. Now it's important to note everything dried and I'm moving on to working on the water. I wanted to work on the water in a separate wash uh, because there is a lot of nuance there that I wanted to capture and simplify um, while I don't have to worry about other areas or other or a big wash that where I am worried about losing the flow. So it's okay to split your painting into uh, different areas and work on them independently. Now the major thing I wanted to achieve here is that feeling of ripples and to do that you have to leave these beautiful uh, gaps of yellow uh, showing through and I exaggerated them obviously and you will see in just a second uh, but yeah it was really important for me to get it and second glance what I should have done is already put a bit of that magenta reflection but I will add it later on uh, but I should have put it in already at this stage now I'm kind of blending at the edges towards the left I'm not too worried about the flow there because everything is going to be there's going to be like a heavy reflection of the boats there so it won't be uh, too visible uh, so I got in the water it dried and now I'm moving on to what you can call the main wash of this painting and that is putting the all of the shadows of the entirety of the background starting from the right for where the dock is and going all around the boats underneath them mainly uh, but also above them you will see later on so in the far kind of distant uh, background or middle ground I guess it would be uh, I'm putting in already these shadows to the left sides of the boats the light is very gently coming from the right so I leave the right side of the boats um, light and I kind of paint the shadows uh, of the boats and behind the boats. Now what's important here is, uh, for me at least, it was important to keep everything connected because right now it's so far in the background. Uh, there is no real need to show serious separation between the shapes. It's more about the how the overall shapes register. Okay, uh, So you can see here, I, all, all I care about registering or leaving here is the um, light side of the boats and that ripple underneath them. Uh, I should have gone with these ripples a little uh, lighter on the wobbliness because they're so far away you'll barely see this wobbliness and I should have exaggerated it in, in the foreground but that's fine. Now I'm connecting it mainly to the shadows under the boats and the farther area it is hard to interpret and that's a skill that is acquired. How do I simplify what I see uh, and it's something I'm still learning and improving. This is me going based off on my impression. So I'm kind of simplifying the farthest boats to very abstract shapes and the closer I get the, m the clearer it gets to me what's in there and so the easier it is to get those uh, reflections or, or shadows quote unquote uh, in the water it's not shadows really it's reflections um, and they're relatively blue so I'm gonna have to blue this up a little more uh, very important. Uh, I'm using a blue that I started using more recently, uh, which I, again, I'm going to write the colors here. I'm just, I don't remember everything while I'm narrating this, but uh, you're going to have the colors of the paints um, and uh, continuing the shadows. Now, one thing you really want to pay attention to is the edges of those shadows or reflections. Now, one thing I didn't, I don't, don't want to say messed up, but I could do better is actually connect them with the hulls of the boats uh, at this stage to use it because the hulls of the boats aren't fully light. I wanted to leave them for later to get the nuance and gradation but I could have already probably merged them at this stage. Uh, one more thing I could have and maybe should have merged is the shadows, the reflections of the masts while this is still wet, which I kind of missed. Uh, so my bad. And these things, you know, it's, it's not the end of the world. Uh, you can add them later on, especially in the darker sections really. Um, the flow is important but you kind of learn that with time, from afar, after everything is done, uh, the flow isn't the only important thing. Uh, there are some things that are a little more important than that, and that is the overall composition and what it looks like. Flow is a very watercolory characteristic, so it is important for me personally to show it as much as I can. But at the end of the day, if you look at oil paintings or acrylics, they won't have a crazy flow in them. There'll be more patches and they still look beautiful. Of course, you can blend them and there is technique for doing that. And, and some people do that. Many people do that. Uh, but they're not uh, definitely not as as um, as loose, kind of flowy, uh, like the sky here, for example. That's really watered down. Maybe with acrylics, probably not with oils. Um, so it's so again flow is important not the end of the world though if you don't get it uh, right it's perfectly fine now I didn't mention but this painting is the perfect example of how sometimes it takes a while for things to connect uh, they don't look right 
just right till the last couple of minutes of the process. And that is fine. That is something that happens sometimes. Um, and you have to learn to work with it and really postpone that. You won't get that gratification uh, immediately. Uh, unless you're very skilled at getting just the right value, just the right color, in just the right place, and that's how you paint kind of like oils, uh, you won't get that immediate satisfaction. And sometimes even in that case, you won't. Um, so don't worry, keep at it, keep doing the process, which is matching the colors and the values you see, uh, and it will connect uh, as, as best as it can, depending on how good of a job you did. Uh, so now it's time to add a bit of the background here. Now we did play around with it a bit, uh, made it a little larger and a little more abstract. Uh, it's very important for me to mute this, so I'm putting in yellow, it's not just the uh, blue and magenta. Okay, and by the way, you won't get a, a perfect gray here because my mix isn't perfect. I'm using kind of a, a slightly cooler blue together with um, with a cool uh, red, which is not even red. It's again more of a magenta. It's not even a quinacridone rose or something like that. It is magenta. It's more like purple kind of. Um, so you won't get a perfect gray here, and that's fine. Uh, what I care more about is the relations between the paint uh, rather than the actual subjective paint in every spot of the painting. It's usually about how they work together and, and it's very contextual. Uh, a warm color can look very cool in the right context and vice versa. Uh, now I rotated the paper because it's much easier getting these masks that way. And again, these are very important. So I'm gonna put them in and make sure to put a lot of them in and a lot of their details in and a lot of the rigging. It's very, very important to put everything there now. And this is where you can go a little wild and <laughs> to just put things, um, put a lot of them in, more than you think there are, and it will actually look good. Uh, part of painting is exaggerating in both directions. So you can use fewer boats and actually make it look like there's tons of boats there without painting all of them. Or you can do the other way around and paint more than what's actually there and have it still look good. Uh, now I rotated it, um, the, uh, I flipped the painting completely because I want to go from dark to light. The bottom of the hulls of the boats are a little um, darker and then they gradually get lighter. Now what I should have done is mixed a bit more of a blue mix here and I haven't, that's my bad. Uh, but again, all of these color nuances, it's something I'm working on. Uh, it's something that uh, I'm putting more focus on and I do believe it, it is improving and it will improve more with time. Uh, now, it still won't look right even after finishing this stage uh, because we still have some details to put on the boats and some highlights too. Um, and this is why this process is a great example of something that doesn't look fully right just until the last minute where when you add the highlights. So you will see. However, I do already start to feel the three-dimensionality of the boats to some extent, okay? What's left is to add a few kind of gentle shadows in between very abstractly, very impressionistically, um, uh, really just try, and, and if you, again, if you compare it to the reference photo, you may think there's barely any connection and you'd be right to some extent. Uh, now there is this beautiful stripe on top of most boats. It's not as felt in the reference photo, it's not as prominent, but I'm actually adding it because I like that as a feature of a boat and I feel like it will make the impression clearer. So once again, an example of changing something pretty drastically uh, to improve the overall impression of the painting. Um, so I love those lines. I love what they look like. I think I saw a couple of Alvaro Cassidy processes uh, a few like a few years ago and it really influenced me. I love putting these lines. I love how he does it uh, with the opaque strong red uh, and the strong blue uh, and the combination of the two looks really good. So one boat's a little more cool, a little warmer. Uh, I like to introduce a lot of yellow too, uh, to it. I'm putting a bit of this opaque yellow in the background too, just for the uh, areas that look a little more well lit. Uh, using it very generously, um, just to bring out some highlights. Now, the, talking about highlights, some of the next steps we'll take is to put those highlights in. Uh, you will see me in just a second. Um, using, and I felt like I needed to uh, add, uh, make these a little more robust, the reflections. Uh, but you will see me using a uh, Uniball Signo uh, white gel pen. You will see me using opaque paint, my favorite John Brilliant, uh, the uh, Shinhan PWC opaque paint. Um, and yeah, I'm spraying a bit of these so, th so, so they can move a little down. Um, just a bit. I'm not looking for a lot of movement and I want the sh these stronger shadows to show. 
so very gently. Uh, there are a few small kind of details within the ripples of the water, uh, and there is some redness there that I forgot to add earlier, and I told you I should have, so now I'm going to add it above in a thin glaze. It's not going to be as good as it could have been, or as prominent as I could have made it, but that's fine. Uh, what I'm actually after here is for it to push the temperature to be a bit warmer. I know it won't be like putting it right on top of the underpainting, or right on top of the white paper, that could have been perfect. Uh, but I am getting a bit of that hint of warmth. And here we go with the pen, putting in some highlights for the masts, because they are lighter than the background. Uh, so this makes them pop. Uh, and I'm going to do as much as I can with the gel pen uh, to put in details here and there. But then I'm going to switch to the opaque paint, which uh, really gives that warmth. Because the gel pen is white. It's re it really is a neutral kind of white. Uh, the, the thick paint I'm using is a bit warm, and I really like that look. Uh, so you'll see it now because it works really well in the context of the scene. It adds a warmth to, it's a very warm scene with the warm light coming from the right. So I wanted to preserve that kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, integrity, the integrity of the light and shadow. Uh, so I'm putting these randomly and you will see there are quite a lot of highlights in the background and I don't know if it's cliffs and the sun hitting them or something like that, but even more important is the edges of the boats, the fronts of the boats or the yachts. Uh, there you can really see that and you will see it on the frontmost uh, boat and it's uh, uh, these floats to the side. Um, kind of using my finger to move them around so they're not too prominent. But you see what big of a difference it makes in terms of the structure of light and shadow in the painting. Look at this line right now. Look at that. That really pulls in a lot of light coming from the right and it looks so good. Uh, and it puts things, I think, in the right context. Uh, and later when I remove the tape and you'll see it from a bit more from afar, uh, I think you will really feel that impression. So let us sign this. Uh, I should have run this at a time lapse, but I kind of left it in. So we have a few more seconds to talk. Uh, one last thing that I will kind of explain that I'm gonna do is the thing it lacks right now a bit is movement. There is some movement in the ripples, but it's missing a bit more of it and also in the sky area. So what are we gonna put in the sky? as you may guess, birds. Uh, so I'm going to do that uh, in just a second. I'm going to put in some groups of birds. And I'm going to do these again generously. So I'm going to really spread them out all across the scene uh, to get that feeling of, a, I don't know, dusk or evening or even early morning when a lot of the seagulls are flying and you can actually hear them uh, with the wind of the sea in the background. Really nice sound, sounds that I love. Um, you can even see some uh, people fishing uh, in the morning and in the evening. So it's just a really, really nice kind of relaxing scene. And hopefully you enjoyed seeing me paint it. Uh, I think I got the colors really nicely. The only thing maybe is the saturation isn't as good as it could have been. So the blue is correct. The magenta is correct. The yellow is correct. Just needs a bit more of them. So that's something for me to improve for next time. Uh, but in any case, I really hope you enjoyed this one. And hopefully you'll enjoy seeing it without the tape. I think it looks so much better. Uh, this usually is the case with uh, scenes that are complete scenes, not just a still life or something small in the middle of the page. Uh, and yeah, very pleased with the result. I think I'm making some progress in terms of my colors. Here it is up close, uh, and now we can wrap it up. So thank you so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed this one, and hopefully this is kind of a mini proof, and sorry for not turning on the camera on time. This is kind of a mini proof for uh, how it is, it can be, that a painting doesn't look as good until it's really in the final 5%, 10%. Some paintings connect immediately and those are great fun and kind of uh, a great experience if, it, if like 30% in you can already see the light and shadow and that's cool, but that's not always gonna be the case. I find with that with more overcast scenes or kind of less of a strong contrast light source, often the enjoyment will be delayed till the last moment where you get the more nuanced kind of value. So I hope that makes sense. I hope that it gives you some motivation. Keep to it, stick to the process, and most importantly, practice as much as possible. I do hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment below, and subscribe. I have a lot of other videos like this one, and discussion videos, and a lot of other stuff. So I hope to see you again in the next vid. We'll talk again real soon.